Let's bring in our next guest joining us on FT Live, Jose Miranda from the Minnesota Twins. Jose, great to see you. How you doing? Hey guys, good, good. How are you? We're good. How's the season going, especially with some pop the last few days for you? Yeah, well, it's been uh it's been going pretty good so far. You know, the team is team is winning. We got a good uh good chemistry, good vibe. Um obviously uh yesterday was a pretty good day for me. Um uh, we didn't end up with the W, which is more important, but you know, it was it was a good day to the play, so pretty good so far. What did you think of after the game? You hit two home runs. You go in the locker room. You're supposed to be mad because you lost, but there's a little bit of you deep down inside that's thinking, "Well, I went deep twice. What the heck's wrong with the rest of y'all?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a tough one because obviously you you don't want to show a lot of uh, emotions in the in the clubhouse. Obviously, especially after a, a loss. But uh, well, obviously inside of me, I was I was thinking about it. Like I knew I hit the two home runs, so I was gonna, I was kind of like a little bit happy inside because it felt great the, the the first two of the year. But uh, outside, I just you know had to be normal, neutral, because I guess we, we we lost the game. So yeah, it was like a fifty fifty. <laughs> <laughs> Did you go anywhere after the game to celebrate your two homers? Did you had a nice dinner. Um, well, yesterday I just went to the to the mall really quick, um, <laughs> <laughs> hang around a little bit, and then went back to my to my house. Did anybody notice you when you were in the mall? Were you the Mall of America? Yeah, Mall of America. Um, yeah, a couple a couple of people, a couple of people noticed me. Um, but yeah, Mall of America is a is a nice one. Did you buy anything? Uh no, I bought something for my daughter. Okay, all right, that's fair. Yeah. So hopefully it was a little like two bats for your two home runs that day. Just a reminder, you know, hey, daddy went deep twice today. So <laughs> remember this, honey. Hey, hey watch, watching you on there, you look a little slimmer, dog. I mean, I, I know you talked about <laughs> yeah, you're, yeah. you're trying to work on basically slimming out a little bit, getting more agility, man. Can you go over the process in the offseason, what you did there? Yeah, well, obviously, um, I started eating uh, eating better. Um, that was one of the, of the main things in the off season, and um, just working out from it was Monday to uh, Saturday. It was uh, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday as I was doing gym, and then Tuesdays and Thursdays I was going to the track. So, and then Saturdays it would be just like a, a normal day at the field. But um, it, it would pretty much be like um, every day, um, every day thing. Just uh, some days off, but. It was basically just like um, having a better nutrition and working out better. You go back. You you go back to Puerto Rico in the off season. Yeah, yeah, I go back to Puerto Rico. So tell me about Leadership Christian Academy and how there's not much about the school that I could find, and I, I my I hablo español para no necesito más, but <laughs> what I could find like. You guys have, am I right, 18 since you got, well, the year before you got drafted, you have 18 guys in pro ball sin, in the last, since 2015. What's going on down there? What are you guys, que habla? Yeah, well, they they um, they um started doing like a really good program with baseball. Um, 2015 was, they had, that was the first guy they got drafted. It was uh, Liam Marrero. He got drafted by the Twins. And then 2016, um, I was the only drafted that year. But from 2016 on, um, 2017, we had a first rounder, which it was um, Helio Ramos with the San Francisco Giants. And then from that moment on, they kind of like took off a little bit and the program is way better. Um, so a lot of people are starting to notice it more in Puerto Rico and like scouts know, know a little bit more about the school, about the program. So they got a, a really good program going on right now. So how many, there's a million baseball academies, not a million, but there's a ton of baseball academies in Puerto Rico. Leadership, you have Beltron, you have Arecibo, you have PR Baseball, Raiders Baseball. I was looking earlier, so is leadership the best one? Carlos Beltran, he's got a name. There's some Carlos Beltran Academy. Francisco Lindor <laughs> yeah. moved up here to Orlando for Montverde. Uh, what, what's yeah, the best um, academy? Uh, uh, well, yeah, we got, we got like, um, I think it's like seven or eight different academies right now, but um, I think the the two that have the most like the the most like the top names is the Carlos Beltran Academy and the Puerto Rico Baseball Academy, which is the one that um, uh, Correa got drafted out of there. Um, uh, Christian Vasquez, uh, different guys. So those are like the top two that are uh, like the the top names in Puerto Rico. Hey, how's your guy Correa? I know at the end of last season he said, "Oh, 
Miranda's coming to work out with me for a couple of weeks. Did that end up happening or because he was a free agent, did you guys have to push it off? Well, we, we tried to work it out, uh, but it was it was hard because um, obviously he had a bunch of stuff going on in the off season. Um, obviously with the, the free agency and like different stuff that he was going on, um, it was a little bit hard. So we, we couldn't, we couldn't end up working out, but, um, we're, we're trying to figure it out to try to this off season. Um, I'm gonna try to go over there in Houston and, and be there for like a couple of weeks. Is he, is he as good as advertised? Like, I'm not saying on the field, we had an, he was one of our first interviews on this show a couple months ago. And I've known Carlos for years. And the way that he talks about caring about the team in every facet and trying to tell guys, like, screw all the outside stuff. Baseball 24-7, take care of your body, do everything you can from a preparation standpoint. Get paid, too, right? Like, make sure you take care of yourself and get your money because you can do whatever the hell you want with your life from 35 on. Is he like that? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, he's totally a baseball guy. Um, he, you know, he gives us a lot of advices. Um, he tells us a lot of things, um, how to care, um, how to get better with your body, how to get like a, a better routine, like a day by day. Obviously, it's such a long season that you got to take care of your body the right way. And, you know, his, you know, he's, he, I think for me, he's great I, on the field and out of the field. You know, um, I believe he's a leader on both uh, both sides, you know, um, on the field and off the field. So um, every advice that he that he gives me, you know, I'll take it and I'll learn from him. Hey, Correa was on here earlier talking about his foot problems and his shoes and everything. Were you, you know, he only wears one set of shoes, the all whites. Yeah. But were you one of the recipients? He doesn't need any of his other shoes. Did he give <laughs> you some of them? Because no, if he no. didn't, he should have. <laughs> No, he hasn't. He hasn't given me one. But I mean, you know, if he if he wants to give me one, I'll maybe have to, you know, hey, I'll get it. <laughs> yeah, more than one. <laughs> I know he got a couple. I know he got a couple different shoes, and I know he got a couple nice ones. Well, he told us he's only wearing the one pair because it doesn't hurt his back and it doesn't hurt his feet. So he's only wearing, the, and he showed us there were a pair of off whites, and so he must have changed it up. He must have found in a couple of different pairs that he can wear. Maybe some 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 other brand. I don't know. Has he? <laughs> You moved to third base this year full time, right, Jose? Yeah. What was the defensive work? Has Correa helped you being next to you? Does he give you pitches? I know shortstops would tell third baseman, hey, or you are the pitch com and hear the pitches. What has the adjustment been like moving to third base every day at the major league level? Yeah. No. Um, so I feel I feel like uh, it's a little bit different the preparation than uh, first to third. Um, obviously, I feel like at third you gotta you you're gonna have more plays, more more difficult plays. Um, but for me, um, just coming up in the minors, uh, I would play third pretty much. It would be basically every day. So um, I feel kind of kind of normal playing playing third. Obviously, it's a bit different than last year because I was playing more first. But you know, just um, being a little bit more ready, um, anticipating the pitches. Um, obviously, knowing the hitters, um, knowing how fast they run. Um, knowing the, the like the throws that I'm gonna make, uh, the the different plays that I'm gonna have, just trying to anticipate. I think that's the that's the one of the more more uh, important things like compared to first, because obviously at first um, you're closer to the bag, um, the the plays are different. So just anticipating those those type of plays um, is the is the one of the right uh, things that I had to uh, you know learn a little bit this year. No doubt. And I remember when I came up, I was a shortstop, actually. They moved me to the outfield and first base. And then eventually I became a third baseman. I think the throwing is a little different, too, as well. Your arm angles, you got to prepare for that. You got to do long toss. There's a bunch of stuff that goes into it for sure as, as a third baseman. Um, my next question to you is about the Yankees, man. Did you know the streak that you guys had not beating them in series since AJ? What was it? 2001. 2001. 2001. So have you guys talked about that? And then have you guys also understood that's cool, but all, but in the playoffs, you guys haven't beat them in years too as well. So have you guys been talking about that and what has been the, the, the questions you guys been talking about in the, in the locker room? Yeah. Um, well, I think for, uh, the first thing is that I think no one knew. Um, so it was, it was pretty, uh, surprising, like since 2001, that's a long time. That's like 22 years. So we like no one knew. Um, we heard it after the game, um, but you know it's a it's a it's a great thing. It's a cool thing that we won the series. Obviously, it's it's pretty important. Any time that you beat a team like the the like the Yankees, 
But uh, now that we won the, the the series in the you know during the regular season, now we got to take care of them in the in the playoffs, which, which is more important. Um, playoffs, that's the that's the one thing you know we want to get there and, and and try to win. Congratulations, Jose! You finally took down my curse. Way to go! Thank you very much. <laughs> AJ was on the team last. I was time. on the team last time it happened, <laughs> and then we lost to him in 0 02 series, 0 03 series, and then we lost to him in the playoffs in 03. So I I was there. Tough times. Jose, this is tough, tough times, yeah. <laughs> Jose, this is when you say, "Wow, you're that yeah. old." Yeah. Well, I was, I was, I was, I was uh, three years old. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, okay. Thanks. So he doesn't remember you, AJ. Okay, that's okay. He, you know, when he walks out of the clubhouse, he makes a ride. Just look at one of the stars on the wall. He'll see. <laughs> <laughs> so back in, so back in 21. So you got drafted. You went 18. You were 18, 19, 20. 21 in 2019 take us to the COVID season what is the difference in Jose Miranda from the 19 season to the 21 season and do you feel like that that 2020 season was lost for you or do you feel like you got something out of it and has made you the player that went on and hit 30 for everyone who's listening 30 homers 94 stakes, you only struck out 74 times, you hit 344 with a 973 OPS. Mm -hmm. You smashed double A and triple A. Yeah, um, I think um for me, <clears throat> I didn't think um it was it was like a lost season. I just took it of uh as a learning thing. Um I was putting in the work uh, every day back in Puerto Rico during the COVID season. I was going to the field. Um, I was hitting pretty much every day. I was trying to make uh, improvements. I was I was trying to get better um, for whenever the 2021 season got. And I was working on different things. I was trying to have a, a better uh, approach to the plate. I was trying to swing on better pitches. That was one of the things that I was working in really hard. And so for me, that's why um, – that was one of the improvements and one of the things that I took from that COVID season. Obviously, we didn't play. Um, I went to Instructs, Instructional League, later on in like September, October. And all the work that I put back in Puerto Rico during the COVID season, um, it kind of showed off on the Instructs because I went there and, and I hit pretty good and I put some good numbers on the, on the Instructional League. Um, so for me, it was more like um, like I took something out of it and it wasn't like lost season for me. Okay, I got one more for you, Hosey. Do you? I never, I never show this. I wear a hat every day, minor league hat. I show my hair. That's what. Don't worry about that. You, your, your, your face got concerned when I didn't have any hair. <laughs> Do you know what that is? Not what team. Do you know what that is? No, not really. No. Do you know what a coquis is? Oh, coquis. Yeah, yeah, coquis. Yeah. It, so, so tell me about the coquis because this is my minor league hat for the day. But anyway. Tell me what you know about the Coquise, and then, you know, I'll see. I'll see if they're right or not. Well, the the Coquise, well, the one thing I can tell you, they're they're from Puerto Rico, and you're gonna hear it like you're gonna hear them at night for sure. When you go to bed, um, you're gonna hear them like super close to you, like Coquie, Coquie. You're gonna think <laughs> that you're gonna you're gonna think they're like right here in the on your ear, but um, they're everywhere. You know, they're like outside. Um, you're gonna, like if you go at night, you're gonna see them. Like they're pretty, pretty tiny, but but they're loud. So um, that that's that's the one thing I can tell you from the cookies. Perfect, love it. That's cool. Wait, who's Kratz? Just do it now. Do the Kratz yeah. hats. Who's is that? The hat, the hat. It's the Lehigh. It's the Lehigh Valley Iron Pigs. It's their Copa Diversidad. Uh, it's their hat. They, it's just for the Puerto Rican population in cool. Allentown, where their stadium is, up in the Lehigh Valley. It's just like a dedication to the. They call it the unofficial, unofficial island animal, the coquise, and yeah, it's nice. just you know it's just dedicating it to the Puerto Rican Puerto Rican population that's up there in Allentown. It's pretty sweet, pretty sweet. Yeah, that's nice. Jose, have you ever been to the uh, the water that glows in the dark, the the lumin bioluminescent where you put your hand in it? It's blue when you at night. It's a good question. No. Is that something? Because it's it's pumped. I've, been to, I've done it. I did. Thing. I did it. It was it good. It was cool. You had to kayak in. It was a thousand degrees, and you're sweating. Oh, that's in a uh, that's in a uh, condado, right? Yeah, condado. and you go you go down this long mangrove like river, and then it opens up, and it's dark. It's at night, and you reach your hand in the water, and it comes up blue, like bright yeah. blue. 
Like, I've really heard cool. about it. Yeah. I've heard about it. I haven't done it, but that's that's one of the things that I got to do when I go back. Okay. Yeah. It's worth it. It's worth it. It's worth the, the, the struggle to get in there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I got one hard hitting and then, and then something fun to ask you. So for hard hitting, um, what do you think about the potential of an international draft? You're someone that comes from Puerto Rico. I know it's talked about and it's debated a lot. Have, have you observed anything from growing up and, and playing ball there versus, you know, an international signing situation? Cause it was a hot topic. And I like to get the perspective from guys who've gone through playing internationally. Yeah. Um, it's, it, it's a tough one. Cause obviously, um, you know, uh, going to a draft, obviously it's not, uh, it's not easy for, for it, like for, for anyone. It's, it's pretty hard. Obviously going to the draft. Um, but for me, um, like, I think, I think if it was by me, I'll just leave it how it is right now. Um, and just see how it goes. And then in the future, maybe, um, you know, make it, make the international draft. But, uh, as, as for me right now, I just I just leave it how it is. Obviously, um, international ball is hard too, but um, the draft they're both they're both you know they're both pretty hard. So, but for me, I, I think I'll, I'll leave it as it is right now. Okay, now I'm going to give you an easier topic. So we spoke last year about Hamilton, and I know you get asked about it a lot because your cousin is Lin Manuel Miranda. I get a little bit of extra say in this conversation because my sister's been in the show now for like five six years. She's in the show in the city. So when I asked you last year, you hadn't seen it yet. You're a busy dude. And I know you hung out with Lynn recently. You're shaking your head. Have you not seen it yet? <laughs> I have. No, I, ha I haven't seen it. And, and you know what? I feel bad. I feel bad because I haven't <laughs> seen it. And everyone asked me. And he, he even asked me if I was going to go to, um, you know, to go watch it. Because I think, I believe it, it, it's here right now in, 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 in um, Minnesota. I think it's until early May. and But I haven't seen it. And I totally feel I feel really bad. So, so Lynn has done very well. He's very successful. You need, he needed to fly you in the off season to New York, grab some dinner, go see the show sitting next to him, which would be super cool. Cause he created yeah. it and he was in it for a while. So yeah. and, and at this point, I mean, I know off days are precious. You don't get much. I'm not faulting you at all. If you don't go <laughs> during the season, but this is what you have to do. Cause I know Lynn would enjoy it. I know. In the winter know. time, do go it. to New York, have him take you and go watch it there. Then do the backstage hangout, the whole thing. Because my sister was like, oh, ask him like who his favorite character is. And I'm like, I don't think he's seen it yet. <laughs> oh, shoot. Yeah. Can you set that up? Tell him. Tell Lynn. I mean, you know, you've been around him. Like, tell everyone. What's he like? Because he's, he's so excited for you. And you're looking at him like, dude, you're an international superstar. Yeah. I'm, no, he's a he's a he's a great guy. He's a great human being. Um, obviously, him being uh, being so famous and having so so much stuff, it's just like when you met when you met him, it's so it's so different because he's you know so humble, so nice. You would never think like that. His you know that that famous and that, that, and that he's done so many things. Obviously, on on what he does, but uh, no, the one thing that you gotta say is he's such a great human being and. And I'm glad, obviously, that he's my cousin, and, and I'm so I was super excited when he went uh, visiting me um, as my teammates. You know, they were all excited. Um, the coaches, they were super excited, happy. They all took pictures, and and it was a it was a good time. So, have you known him your whole life? Like, were you did you guys keep in touch when you were younger? Because obviously, you know, he hit a point. I don't know. At this point, it's maybe been like 15 years that he's been famous and a big deal, and came out with in the Heights and. And Hamilton and all of that. So, did you guys see his rise and then go, "Holy shit, Lynn's huge!" Now. <laughs> no, so so I really, I, we we really met when I was. It was like uh, five or six years ago. Um, we had like a family reunion back home in uh, in Puerto Rico, and he he came from uh, from New York, and he was there, and that was the first time that I met him. I was like uh, nineteen years old, I believe so. And from that moment on, I started to know a little bit more about him, and obviously, I started to ask more because I was like, "Oh." Um, what does he do? What you know? What's uh, what's his, uh, his thing and all that? And obviously, now I know all the stuff he does, so it's it's pretty cool. Jose, before we let you go, I have one question for you: Who does your hair? Because it's higher than Scott Bronze, which is <laughs> physically impossible to do. So Scott is very jealous that your hair stands up higher than his does. So it, you it's give funny him some tips. 
<laughs> no, it's funny because like I, I I wake up like this. <clears throat> I wake up. I don't do anything. I don't I don't put any gel. I don't put any just a little bit of water and that's it. I'm I'm ready to go. I do not have the same uh, <laughs> natural ability. If I'll I'll, I'll do it uh, one day because I don't give a shit on this show. I'll I'll just let it go one day and you guys will have fun with me. I've it, seen it when it's not done. It it's is curly everywhere. <laughs> It's a curly, wavy mix. Like, I wish I could be like this, where you just don't have to do anything to it. But, yeah. Jose, unfortunately, it takes up a, a decent chunk of my day. <laughs> <laughs> Jose, well, I, got, I, got a quick, I got a quick one for you. My buddy was yeah. AJ Jimenez. We played together for a while. He, was talk, he would always talk about, like, oh, man, Puerto Rico, man, we all wanted to be catchers. He said, but nobody wants to catch anymore. What do Puerto Rican baseball players, when they're young, who do they want to be? Oof. Um, well, I've heard a lot of guys, they, they like a lot of uh, Ivan Rodriguez, Yadiel, Yadiel Molina. But a lot of the guys, too, growing up, when I, like, when I was like seven, eight years old, we, we, lo- we like a lot of shortstop. So for us, it was a lot of um, like Jeter, like Derek Jeter. Um, we like a lot of um, Alex Rodriguez, Roberto Alomar, like second base, Omar Vizquel. So it, those those were like, like the guys that, that I heard when I was like, you know, growing up. Now you've got Lindor, Correa. Yeah, now we got, yeah, now we got Lindor, Correa, Baez. Baez now yeah. like all the all the guys that are growing up that I've heard like the top names in Puerto Rico right now is like Lindor, Correa, Baez, like short stuffs. Yeah. Uh, hey, we've got two catchers on this show. They'd probably recommend the uh, middle infield. They get catching, paid better. Right? They get paid better. There you go. Sure. There you go. <laughs> hey, it was great having you on. We really appreciate you. Keep kicking ass this season, and we'll talk to you down the road. Thank you, guys. Thanks for having me. Thank Gracias. you. Thanks for the time. Gracias. Awesome.